Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press, the segment where we take a look at the headlines in the country. Um, let's begin with the Punch newspaper. The headline reads, 73 Zamfara students' abduction. Arawa Consultative Forum, ACF, fumes as government tells residents to fight back. Gunmen in broad daylight block roads, abduct ex councillors four daughters, others. ACF fought self-defense call, says government that can't protect citizens has no reason to exist. Matawale advises communities to use any weapon at their disposal and come out en masse. Conflicting judgments, six chief judges appear before NJC today. Sacked ministers fail to meet target. Buhari plans more evaluation. NLC threatens industrial action over proposed electricity tariff hike. Remittances, Senate accuses NNPC, CB and others of underpayment. PDP crisis worsens, word suspends secondus. APC upholds Abiodun Loyalist Congress, ignores Amosu Group. AKT community protests couple others kidnap. Bandits demand 10 million naira. Security agents Ba Alafin Ulubadon from Lekon Salami Stadium inauguration. And lastly, Rep says the EFCC is helping customs to recover 10.6 billion naira. All right. Moving on to the daily independent newspapers. Bandits invade Zamfara, governor's hometown, abduct over 100 students, kill nine, scores injured in Kogi community, abduct couple and two others in Ikiti. Residents protest. And three lawmakers escape death in Nasarawa. Also on the Daily Independent, Senate accuses CBN of withholding 80% operational surplus from Federation account. Amnesty assessment of Nigerian government, mayor ranting and biased, says the presidency. Don't set Nigeria ablaze with hate speech, federal government warns leaders. And also why Buhari reshuffled cabinet, sacked a Greek and power ministers. Restructuring, devolution of power would resolve security problems and end agitation, says Iwanyo. And uh, we can also find here, would resist planned increase in electricity tariff, NLC, NLC vows. Finally, on the Daily Independent, COVID-19 vaccination, Obaseki threatens another lockdown, says government will act to protect people. Of moving now to the Nation newspaper, the headline um, is an explainer into why Buhari fired power agriculture ministers. Undo doctors call off three-month strike. Ihe Kwazu is WHO assistant DG. 73 pupils kidnapped in Zamfara. Government shot schools. Lagos candidates tops UTME results with 358. NDA yet to find kidnapped army officer one week after. Senate panel, CBN, disagree on remittance of revenue surplus. Benefits of my administration will be felt after my exit, says Buhari. PDP crisis, Secondus ready to withdraw his case. All right, um, now moving from the Daily Independent, let's see what we can find on the leadership newspapers. First time in six years, PMB wields big stick on two cabinet ministers, or two cabinet members, I beg your pardon. Power, a Greek ministers fired for underperformance and flip-flop policies. More ministers to go. Citizens hard hit as food inflation rises from 13.7% to 21%. Power supply worsens. Experts set agenda for new ministers. And um, the PDP says the president's action won't change anything. IPOB has amassed weapons and bombs, says the presidency. Still in the news, bandits strike in Zamfara, abduct 100 students in Mataoli's hometown. CBN appoints Wansinobi and seven others as departmental directors. Um, I think that's really all we can find on the leadership this morning. Good morning to Mr. Nyayatok. Good morning. It's always a pleasure to be on Plus TV Th Africa. Thanks for joining us. There's a, a couple of very big stories in the headlines this morning. Um, I'm not sure which you would like to start from, the kidnapping of 100 students or the cabinet reshuffle? Um, let's, let's start with the kidnapping of the 100 students. Well, um, um, just for a minute, in the states, the state government and the state police command 
have said officially it's 73. So other figures of over 100 are currently unverified. You know, it's so disheartening. The Bible talks about a man that had a hundred sheep, not human beings, sheep. And one sheep was missing, one. And he left the 99 and went in search of the one sheep, sheep that was missing. Nigeria, we are not talking sheep, we are not talking cattle, we are talking of human beings. And there is, oh, no, it wasn't 200. It was just 150. No, it wasn't 150. It was, and, and these are mind-boggling figures. Mm. Not one human being, not five, not 10, not 50. They are saying, no, it wasn't 100 and something. It was just 70-something human souls. It's disheartening the extent to which we have allowed human life to be so cheap such that it's like two a penny. We were in this country when an American, one American, was within our environment and we saw what the American government did. They went out of their way and rescued that one American. On a daily basis, we are losing Nigerians in, in, in scores, in tens, if not in hundreds, on a daily basis. I think the time has come when we really need to sit down. And um, I was listening to your, you know, your analysis before time, and um, I, could, I could feel Osa as, as he was... Um, making certain very hard statements, and you were, not uncomfort you were not too comfortable with it. But let's face this issue. If you have cancer, that cancer is either excised or it spreads. I do not know if we understand what is going on in our country with respect to these terrorists that we are using perfume to, to, to get sexy with them and call them bandits. How long is it going to take for the federal government to wake up and look at the North? The North is, being, you know, we're talking of, it, there's such a terrible contradiction in this country, I don't understand. Let power go to the North, power to the North, power to the, we keep talking about power to the North. Do these Northerners, with all due respect, my brothers and, and, and my sisters and brothers, in it, do they really care about the people? Does development really Count. Does the life of the people really matter to these people that represent the North? Because, so my best friend, I attended a federal government college, so understandably, my, my worldview is different. My two children are married. I have two boys. They are both married to the North. I have two boys. They are both married to the North. They are, they are, their wives are from the North. And it really bothers me if they really care about the fact that education is the future of any people and that these people cannot go to school, did they really sit down and think of the larger implication, the prognosis of what is going on today? Not just human life, even the development, the admirable boys. What is the plan, the policy of government for these young people who are fellow Nigerians? All I'm hearing is of oh, power to the north, power to the north. As a matter of fact, the one person that stood up for these Almajiris was a southerner, President Goodluck Jonathan. He took it as, look, one of my friends, very, very good friend, he was contesting election in the north, governorship, and he said he's not going to win. I asked him why. He said because his policies, he attended King's College, so he thinks in terms of development, he thinks in terms of human resource, he sees the human resource, and he thinks in terms of going to disrupt the system so that the children can have a future like his children. And he says he's going to go against the establishment. And as a result, they are going to go out of their way to stop him. That was the most irrational thing I've heard in my life. But that was a sad reality. So I want the youth of the North to really sit down and ask themselves very, very serious question. Is there a difference between politics and development? And if there is, 
Which of the lines are they going to go with? Even if somebody must come from the north, who, what should be the, the criteria? What should be the quality of, of such a person? This issue of religion and divide, oh, he's a Christian. Where how, how does that affect the price of Ghana in the market? If a Muslim can come and give me a good country, so be it. Well, uh, if a country, Christian can give you a better future and secure you, so be it. What do you really want? Right. Mr. Ayatok, let, let's move away from there. Um, we will revisit uh, that conversation later on the show this morning. Uh, but let's uh, also talk about some other very big story, and that is the cabinet reshuffle. The president has sacked the Minister of Power and the Minister of Agri, uh, Saleh Maman and uh, Sabo Nanunu, and replaced them with uh, two others. Uh, Mohamed uh, Mahmoud, who's uh, Minister of Environment before, now takes over as Minister of Power, and then Abubakar Liu, was Minister of State for Works and Housing, takes over as Agriculture Minister. Um, do you see this as you know, a great step by the current administration? Um, in a sense, yes. In a sense. In the sense that just the animation of the fact that you underperformed, just that animation is likely to get others to sit up because Mr. President had come to this point where, I mean, something has to make you to do something. My mother used to tell me that the child that never has anything to fear never amounts to anything in life. That's what my mother used to tell me. The child that has nothing to fear never amounts to anything. You got to know that your boss will not take certain things. Oh, I trust you. Oh, I trust them. Oh, I know them. Oh, I trust them. Six years, you trust them, and we become the poverty capital of the world. Six years, we become one of the top three most terrorized nations in the world. Six years, you trust them. doesn't make sense to me. So for me, better late than never. On the positive, I'll say, yes, that animation alone will definitely make people to sit up. It will also bring about conversations on you know, on um, excellence or performance within the polity because people are now starting to, you know, discuss and they will now start to do analysis of others. They will ask this environment ministry that has been given a bigger role to play in agriculture. Is it out of excellent performance in the Ministry of Environment? Can we really do an analysis of the Ministry of Environment and find that the minister is smelling like a rose, on account of which he's going to be given mm -hmm. agriculture, which is one of the mainstays of our economy. So these are questions that we must ask. Minister of State Housing, that happens to be my area. And I think I will, for reason of propriety and wisdom, withhold my comment on that area. But... My prayer is that these people will see their new assignment as a mark of confidence in them. And the worst thing they can do to their boss is to make Nigerians feel that the president didn't know what he was doing. So, but if they come up and really hit the ground running, yeah. we will be able to hail the president. That's the least they can do to their boss. Well, um, <laughs> the current administration has just about two years um, you know, before a new government comes in. So I'm not sure how fast they can actually hit the ground or which ground they would hit in the next, uh, between now and 2023. Um, but I, I also want to ask you, um, how long would you take to make a change if you see that certain persons aren't working in a company um, or in an organization? Um, on, from your perspective, would it take you a whole year or two years or five or six? You see, I'll, I'll tell you this. I've been so close to government without ever taking up any government appointment. Every government in my state, starting with Obongata, I was one of the closest to him. Coming to my brother, Akpabio, extremely close to him. Coming to Mr. Udom, I know the system. And I keep making an advice. Number one, in your first term, pretend you don't have a second term. Work so hard, so bad and let your performance speak for you. When you get into second term, know that it is exit that matters. And if I had my way, if I'm a governor by the grace of God, 
by the end of the second, by the end of the first year in office, I'd already had six years. Those who are, I would have already had five years, those that performed well over the period, I'll retain them. But now on your first year, at the end, start what we call a finishing team. This finishing team are people who are not going to look for office, number one. Number two, they are people who are very competent by, because by now it's no longer maybe, maybe not. Look at your priority areas. Within the past five years, you would have had people that you say they are stars. Bring them to your legacy uh, ministries. You're not going to be able to achieve everything. Those hardcore performers, bring them to your legacy ministries where you want to have what you may call, what you should be remembered for, your legacies. And you are not going to do that two years to go because election would have started by that time. Right now, Mr. President has waited so, so, so late. By the next, by the end of this year, you know, one of the ministers that was appointed, I, I told somebody I could never accept to be appointed a minister two years to the end of an administration. I wouldn't accept it. The reason is that in the ministries, there's what they call managing the boss. At that time, they know that you're on your way out and there's no second term. So there's no, no fear of you. They can manage you, they can play you before you know they are looking for file. Before you know, you bring up a memo, they are telling, they, are, they call it managing the boss. They manage you to exit you, they don't fear you, they, are not, they can actually ignore you. So when you come up now as a minister, number one is that the civil servants don't take you serious because they know you're on your way out. Number two is that the politicians are starting business and their own is like, guy, get us money for election, get us money for election. So they are not thinking in terms of development for you. They are thinking in terms of putting pressure on you to bring out money for election. So at the end of the day, you discover that you achieve next to nothing. That is a sad reality in Nigeria right. and it's a cycle that I hope we can break. So the ministry's staff are not going to be listening to these new ministers. They're just going to manage them and blah, blah, blah. And you're just coming in as a new person you want to start to study to understand what is going on. You're not going to find the information you need that is important. They're not going to give it to you. And secondly, those things you want to hit the ground running to achieve things, politicians are not going to allow you. They're like, my guy, election is coming. Election is coming. Don't let us lose. They will put such terrible pressure on you that you'll be so distracted. So I don't see much that this we are going to do. You should have done this at least a year ago before politics started. And when the civil servants still knew that you have a little bit of time. Right now, they know, they know you don't have time. So they are going to manage you. They are going to tell you things that are sexy. They are going to show you areas you can make small money here and there. And if you want to look right. at areas that you must stop there so that things that okay, go right now frustrate you, and at the end of the day, you achieve nothing. Okay, so um, finally, I want us to and you know, ponder on this important question, if the president is understood. Because he's been speaking recently and he's, he's been saying that the full impact of his administration would only be felt after. And that he's not been out for shortcuts, but he's been, you know, taking the due diligence and making sure that his projects have long-term benefits. So do we misunderstand the president when we criticize him? him. You know... Uh, a former president, Jonathan, said, when I leave office, you people will not go miss me. Oh. You understand me? He said it. And the jury is out there. Are we missing him or not? Mr. President has said that the full impact of what I'm doing will be felt when I leave office. Now, <laughs> that could be positive. It could be negative. The dead body is going to be felt when he leaves office. I'm telling you, it's going to be felt when he leaves office. The 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 the, 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 the terrorists that have been emboldened when he leaves office and another person comes in, there can be peace in this country within four to six months. Take that to the bank. There can be peace in this country within four to six months of somebody who comes in and says enough is enough. That nonsense is going to stop. Because of the body language that we are talking about is somebody who says, look, I'm not taking this nonsense anymore. 
So the full impact of Mr. President, you know, romancing, well, seemingly, let me be careful to, to recount it, seemingly romancing on account of which this was becoming so emboldened and so brazen in the, in the, in the approach to, 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 to ravaging this nation. The full impact will be felt after his left office. It is after his left office that we'll know whether these terrorists were, were, were afraid of him or they were emboldened by him. Mm. But they're also certain things that he's done that um, the full impact in government. There are certain foundations that you lay that the result will not come immediately. And Nigerians also have to learn to not put undue pressure on administrations for here and now. In the Bible, there's a statement that is recorded, and I think we should understand that in government. He says, Paul sowed, Apollos watered, on account of which God ultimately gave the increase. There needs to be a very good communication, and I blame this on the Minister of Communication, not just communication, information, because he needs to let us know that these are foundations for a four-story building or foundations for a sky rise, you know, which is going to be like uh, maybe 20 floors or 50 floors, and that this foundation is going to take four years to lay just foundation. When people know that and you come to build a superstructure, they don't give the credit to only you that has built the superstructure they can see, they give the credit to the man who laid the foundation on, a, on account of which the superstructure is being built. Oh, wow. But Nigerians is like, I want to see, want to build bridge, build roads. You know, when you invest in education, imagine that you invest in the primary education now. You're not going to see the effect until they get into secondary school, which is going to be like six years after when you're on your way back. Even the secondary school will not too much show until they get into university, which is going to be like over 10 years or thereabouts which is far above the span of your right. two sessions. Yes, talk, well, but when we know that a foundation, a solid foundation is being laid, we'll be able to appreciate when the person absolutely. leaves office. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Ezekiel Nyayatok. Thank you. Uh, thanks for joining us this uh, Thursday morning. We wish you a very interesting day ahead. And uh, good morning Same once again. You. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right. Stay with us. Uh, today in history is uh, coming up right after the short break. I'm going back to the year 1968 to tell you a little bit about the Nigerian Civil War. And I'm going to the year 2013 to tell you about a record-breaking swim. Stay with us.